Today we're going to talk about mad honey. It's a very interesting type of honey that results in things like hallucinations, intoxication, and other interesting effects. We're going to learn about what it is, how it works, and get a general overview on this really interesting natural product. So let's get into it. What is mad honey? Well, mad honey comes from these plants that belong to the Ericaceae family, like rhododendrons, plants like this. There's a bunch of different ones. The honeys that come from this family contain these things called granotoxins. And just like nicotine and tobacco, you can find these toxins in all parts of the plant. Stems, leaves, flower, pollen, nectar, all that stuff. You can find these plants and this honey in places like Turkey, Nepal, Europe, North America. Turkey and Nepal seem to have the higher amounts of these plants and thus the most honey, from what I understand. Nepal seems to be the place where it's more popularized, but it is present in other parts of the world. Poisoning or intoxication results in a variety of symptoms. A lot of those symptoms depend on how much you consume. Small amounts lead to things like euphoria, dizziness, mild hallucinations. Large amounts can lead to things like more moderate to intense hallucinations, heart rhythm issues, vomiting, low blood pressure. We're gonna talk about this stuff in the last slide. So let's continue. I mentioned that this honey, these plants contain things called granotoxins. These toxins are a set of over 25 present in the plants. In my research, I saw a paper that said 18, one said more than 25. In general, there's a bunch of these toxins. Most of them are not fully understood, but we do know that G1, G2, and G3 are the main ones G1 and 3 being the most toxic isomers. So what is an isomer? Isomers are chemicals that have the same formula. So in this case, 22 carbons, 36 hydrogens, seven oxygens, but they look a little different. So I know these structures look crazy, but they're a little different in these places. Here and here, here and here, and here and here. If you pause, you'll see that the main backbone, what I didn't circle is the same, but what I did circle is a little different. And that's what an isomer is. And they come from these really beautiful flowers. And as I mentioned, there are more plants that these toxins are present in. How do these toxins work? In our body, we have all kinds of structures that allow things to move in and out. In this case, we have these things called voltage-gated sodium channels. Think about an electric gate to a house or an apartment. Most of us have gone through these. Usually they let one car in at a time. This is similar to how these channels work. If we zoom in here, the natural process is you have a resting stage where the gates are closed. You have an activated stage where everything opens up and you have sodium, this ion that moves through. We're familiar with sodium because this is a part of NaCl or table salt. Once it's activated and sodium moves through, like your car moving through that gate, the gate closes and it gets to an inactivated state and then it fully closes. As you can see in the inactivated portion, the gate is technically still open, although it's plugged up by this structure. And then when it's resting, the gate fully closes. You can think of this like a stoplight. Stoplights go from green to yellow and to red, and then it starts over. That's the normal process. What happens with these molecules is that they bind to this structure when it's activated. When it connects, it stays open, so it doesn't get inactivated and thus doesn't get to the fully closed position. Because of this, you have a constant flow of sodium. So let's go back to our stoplight analogy. This would be similar to a light just staying green. So if you have one light that stays green at an intersection, it'll cause a whole host of issues, accidents and all kinds of stuff, because cars will just keep moving while other cars are operating at a stoplight like normal. When these channels stay open, it causes a whole host of different symptoms. So let's talk about those. These symptoms include things like low blood pressure, bradycardia, which is a slower heart rate, bradyarrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat, or potential or complete AV block. The AV node is basically the natural pacemaker to the heart. Outside of that, you can also expect things like alterations of consciousness, hallucinations, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, tingling, numbness, and burning around the mouth, and a bunch of other things. As I mentioned in the first slide, this depends on how much honey you consume. In general, when you consume it, it definitely makes you feel a little different, which is why I wanted to talk about it. So let's get into the summary and go back over what we learned. We first talked about mad honey coming from these plants, and these plants have granotoxins, which are present in all parts of the plant. You can find them in all sorts of places. Nepal seems to be the place where it's more popular. When you consume this honey, it results in all kinds of symptoms, which depend on how much you consume. 
we then learned a little bit about granotoxins, this set of a decent amount of chemicals present in these plants. We learned that G1, 2, and 3 are the ones that are present in the highest amounts, G1 and 3 being the most toxic ones. And while they have the same formula, they look a little different in their structure. We learned about how they work. They plug into these structures, allowing for a constant flow of sodium, like a stoplight staying green. And this produces all sorts of different effects. These effects include things like low blood pressure, low heartbeat, hallucinations, blurred vision, alterations of consciousness, and all sorts of other things. So that's all I got. I hope you guys learned a lot. I definitely learned a decent amount as I did research for this video. I saw some YouTube videos and read some news articles. So I thought to myself, why not make a quick video to teach you guys about it and so I can learn about it as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends and I'll be back soon with another video.